to day 12 of Shaped by the Word. I'm Paul Kemp. I'm here with uh, Matt Kresge, hey. our student pastor at uh, Christ Church and so much more. And with David Keefe, our executive pastor. I'm not even sure I know what that is. I don't know either. But uh, yeah, it's good to, <laughs> it's good to be here with you guys and good to be reading God's Word together. We've been going through the Gospel of Luke and it has been you know, fun, you know, fun few days in this new season of reading the New Testament together. Uh, Luke is rich in uh, the way that he forms his gospel and the way he shapes you know the ministry you know, of Jesus. Just a reminder, you know, we'll do podcasts and video casts through the week. We've left you with two readings from the Psalms, you know, on the weekend. Usually in, in my family we have breakfast together, you know, on Saturday morning. We call it theology okay. Saturday. And so we read the Psalms together both days, you know, and one day, you know, together. And then uh, talk about you know what we've you know our quiet times and some of the insights we've had from quiet time and you know pray together, so you can be creative in how you use the psalms. Uh, we thought you know reading psalms on the weekend is a perfect way to prepare your heart for worship you know with the people of God. So we hope you'll enjoy the psalms uh, this weekend, and we will see you back here uh, on Monday yeah, or Monday. day uh, 14, 15. 15. 15. Yeah. One of those days, <laughs> there'll be another day. Uh, that we'll come back and spend some time, you know, with you together. As always, before we, uh, you know, turn to God's Word, we want to turn to God Himself, uh, set our hearts and our minds on Him, and prepare ourselves, you know, to receive from Him. He has rich gifts to give us every time we turn to His Word, mm-hmm. which He has breathed out by His Spirit and through His Spirit. He uh, makes known to us or illuminates His Word to us, brings it home in a very rich way. I think, you know, Jesus framed it this way. The Spirit will take from the things that are mine, and he will make them mm-hmm. yours. And so let's pray that God will do that. Matt, do you mind yeah. leading us? Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your word. We thank you that you're a God who speaks, who reveals, and also a God who helps us to understand, gives us understanding. And so, Father, we pray for that in this time. We pray for wisdom as we read your word. We pray, um, most importantly, to, to commune with you to enjoy you, to fellowship with you. And as we do, would you transform us? We thank you that you use your word um, to, to bring about everything you desire in us. And so we pray for that um, today. We pray that you would use your word to build us up in Christ Jesus and you would get glory from it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. What a great prayer. As we've been reading through Luke's gospel, of course, he introduces us with the first few verses just telling us why he's doing what he's doing because there's some significant things that are being fulfilled among us the story of jesus is bringing the old testament to life in a rich and a in a fresh way and then he spends a couple of chapters setting the background with rich old testament allusions in the birth narratives of both john the baptist and and jesus and then we are introduced to john's ministry and jesus ministry and uh, Jesus has just, you know, gathered, you know, his disciples and chosen 12 to be apostles. And he's opened his heart and he's began to teach them what it means to follow him in this upside down kingdom. And so we've just concluded, you know, that for Luke, the sermon on the level place. We're used to calling it the Sermon on the yeah. Mount, but Luke tells us the Sermon on the level place. And uh, now Jesus is beginning to interact again with people in the area of Galilee as he prepares to go to Jerusalem and to go to the cross. So we pick up in Luke chapter 7, verse 1. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some of the elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with him. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent his friend to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed, for I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you the truth, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had sent, uh, been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. 
Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd followed from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and he touched the briar uh, they were carrying, and the bearers stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were filled with awe and praise God. The great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. John's disciples told him about all these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Nice, uh, nice little frame. Uh, you have to love, and Jesus is doing once again, or, uh, or Luke is doing once again, what he's emphasizing you know, in Jesus' ministry. You have a centurion who comes to him who is one, one of the Gentiles, one who has a heart for the Jewish people, evidently out of his own funds, you know, built a synagogue. I was just looking at the pictures of the Capernaum Synagogue. Uh, you know, uh, replicas of it. You know, not long ago. <laughs> it is really, yeah, it's really kind of a, a pretty elaborate little structure. So to have built it would have, you know, called for great effort, you know, from the Roman soldiers, and a part of it. So this is a man who has a, you know, a genuinely, you know, a genuinely good heart. But the thing that impresses Jesus about him more than anything else is his confidence in the ability of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, based just on what he had heard and what he had seen. And then he turns, you know, to everyone else and he says, "Those of you who have known the word should have been prepared for this. Uh, none of you have this kind of faith." And so Luke once again is pointing to outsiders who are finding their way into the kingdom, while insiders are kind of, you know, sitting back and, and not receiving you know, the gifts and the promises of the kingdom. Well, what a true mark of faith that, yeah, everyone around this centurion says, "Man, he's worthy." to have you come Jesus he deserves this you know look at what kind of man he is Mm -hmm. and yet the man says I'm not worthy that's why I didn't come to you in fact I have such faith that all you have to do is say the word you know I think this is the first time we see Jesus perform a miracle just you know at a distance just says the word and it it happens and he I love you you just mentioned he pretty much says hey y'all should have been prepared for this you should have seen this coming and yet someone outside of israel you know a gentile has a greater faith than you because he believed that jesus is who he says he is and could do what he says he could do and and i'm still amazed at his faith um, because he's he's transitioning from the physical world where he is a commander can command people to come and go and to do you know things as he pleases and he's transferring that to the spiritual world he's a what I can do in the physical world, you can do in the spiritual world, and I know that you can, you know, from a distance, command Mm -hmm. that my servant be well, and he'll be well. I love getting to see Jesus, obviously, authority um, to heal those who are sick, but then also moving on those who are dead. Um, He has the power and the authority over all of that, and so when we think of Jesus, I think so often I kind of forget that, I think, that he has the power, the authority to heal the sick from a distance and then even the, the dead widow's son. Yeah, the power of her life and death this yeah. is a really touching scene to me because uh, the widow does not come to Jesus and ask, you know, could you heal my son? Mm-hmm. He sees, you know, he sees this funeral procession, you know, for people walking through, carrying the body through the city of Gate, and he focuses on this woman and on her tears and on her sorrow and realizes you know the plight that this has put her in she has no visible means of support she doesn't have a husband she you know does probably you know in this context would not have had any means you know physical support whatsoever Uh, this had been devastating loss in every way that you possibly and he has compassion on her on her loss and and restores 
person. I did, it's yeah. we, beautiful We scene. actually just walked through this with students, and one of the things that stood out to all of them and, and what we talked about is, you know, in Hebrews, you have the author of Hebrews reminding us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we read a passage like this, and we see the compassion and mercy of Jesus that I love the line in ver- verse 13. It says, when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. I mean, he, he knew what he was about to do in that moment. And, and I'm sure a lot of people there with him have seen him do these things and wonder, you know, kind of wondering, Man, is, is, this gonna, is he going to do something here? He knows what he's about to do, and yet his heart goes out to her. We see just the compassion and the mercy and the grace of Jesus towards this widow. And, and I think Luke's trying to frame it this way because he's, he's showing us. You know, he could have just said, you know, and there was a, a woman who had lost her son. You know, but he, he frames it as a woman who was a widow, you know, who had lost her son and gives us these details and Jesus' heart goes out to her. So how do we know Jesus' heart goes out to us? Well, the author of Hebrews, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, you know, when we, 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 when we read stories like this and we see the compassion of Jesus, he does not change. This is who he is and this is who he is towards us as well. And then just as Jesus' heart went out for her, the, the widow, you know, Jesus' brother, half-brother, step-brother, James reminds us that our heart is to go out to those in need as well, just as we see Christ here, that, you know, true religion is the care for the orphan Mm -hmm. and the widow. And so that the heart of of Jesus here to this woman is also to be our heart towards those around us who are in those difficult situations that we don't just say, even as James goes on, like, well, peace be well. I hope it goes okay, but to involve ourselves to, 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 go where they are um, and and to meet them where they are. And of course, that's just what we talked about yesterday. Uh, when we love hard people in hard ways, we show ourselves to be children of the Most High or you know, sons of the Most High because our Heavenly Father is merciful. And, of course, here we see this wonderful mercy in Jesus in the crowd. You know, responds in verse 16. They were filled with awe and praise God. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people, uh, which is a promise of the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, of course, the promise fulfilled in Christ, you know, in Matthew's gospel, Emmanuel, God is with us in him. Mm-hmm. I love where he goes next with John the Baptist, yeah. you know, because you come up these two incredible stories and then you get John who we've already met, you know, and he leaped for joy. He knows who Jesus is and yet he's in the sitting womb. in, yeah, yeah he he left a for little joy. bit of doubt. You know, he baptized Jesus. He saw, yeah. you know, the Holy Spirit come in bodily form. He heard the voice from heaven. Yeah. And, and now you have him kind of just rotting in a prison cell kind of waiting yeah. to, to die i mean and he's wondering I, I just wonder if he's replaying all this in his head thinking did i miss something did i you know was i off and he's he, he just asks jesus again I, it's another portrait of Jesus' compassion and mercy towards even john you know he's wanting to know is are you the one or is there another to come and you know, i love jesus's response because he doesn't just say i'm the one and in fact he points him back to the old testament yeah. promises and everything that he's been doing and says, you know, John, yeah. you know this. Yeah, I would have said, come on, John. Yeah. <laughs> you were there when I was baptized. Did, did you hear the voice? <laughs> yeah. You know, saying, this is my beloved son, and him I am well pleased. Uh, did you see the spirit in the descend? Uh, and, and, of course, he, he'll, he'll go on, and we'll, we'll capture this, you know, next time we're together. But he'll go on and commend John, yeah. you know, for who he is and, and, and for things that he, is, he has done. Uh, and a lot of us can relate to this moment. You know, it, it's one of those dark moments, you know, of doubt. And I think, you know, if you've walked with, you know, Christ any any amount of time, y- you've been there. But we do have the calm reassurance of everything that he has said and done, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that brings the picture so clear of what, you know, God is, you know, doing in and through him. Yeah. And I, I love the way he replies because this takes us back to, you know, his sermon, you know, in Nazareth. You know, that uh, the Lord has anointed me to preach, you know, good mm-hmm. news to the poor, to restore those, you know, uh, who, are, who are blind, to set the prisoners free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, that, that God is restoring and remaking yeah. everything. And so he comes right back to the initial theme that has characterized Jesus' ministry as we've read it in Luke. And from day one, he said, so he replied to the messengers, go back and report to John what you've seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame are walking, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. It's kind of an incredible little tack on at the end. A lot of really spectacular things. But here are the marginalized and the poor receiving good news and the welcome of the kingdom 
ones the world has excluded uh, are being welcomed into the kingdom. Yeah, and in John's doubt, Jesus takes him back to Jesus. And in our doubts and our difficulties, we too need to be taken back to Jesus. And I love that Luke includes this, right? Because some commentators kind of, or even scholars just kind of wrestle with this, like, well, John surely couldn't have doubted. He knew. It's like, no, John was, is like us. And I think Luke's showing us that even in our doubts, Jesus proves he is faithful. He is who he says he is. And he doesn't deal harshly with us just simply because we have doubts. No. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you that uh, you meet us uh, in our sorrow. You meet us in our, our doubt. I thank you that you are a God who is full of mercy. And we love the tenderness and the compassion that you've shown us in, in Christ Jesus. We, we thank you uh, that uh, you've given us all these signs of the kingdom that you are restoring, renewing, and remaking, and including those that the world has, has forgotten. We thank you for the heart of the gospel. May it transform us, and may it, through us, uh, be powerfully at work in our city. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen.